these. Let's begin to worship this Lord, our Savior Jesus, who died for us, sacrificed his life on Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I spurned Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary There your mercy and your grace was free There your pardon multiplied to me there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I've given Jesus everything. Now I gladly own Him as my King. Now my raptured soul can only see of Calvary. Oh, there your mercy and your grace was free. There your pardon multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. My burden so found liberty at Calvary. At Calvary. Amen. Let's praise him for his great love. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. The grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. There, your mercy and your grace was free. There, your pardon multiplied to me. There, my burden. So bad. within me. Let's read together. This is found in the book of Psalms. And the description of this psalm is a description of the godly. So may these words be said of us. Lord, who can dwell in your tent? Who can live on your holy mountain? The one who lives honestly, practices righteousness, and acknowledges the truth in his heart who does not slander with his tongue, who does not harm his friend or discredit his neighbor, who despises the one rejected by the Lord, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his word, whatever the cost, 
who does not lend money at interest or take a bribe against the innocent, the one who does these things will never be moved. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord for his word, for the example that Jesus showed us of a person who can ascend the hill of the Lord and be found on his holy mountain. Let's praise him as we continue together. You came to search and rescue. You came of the Father sent you. Broke through the darkest night. You came to seek and save us. In love you liberate us. Jesus, you heard our cry. Jesus, you heard our cry. Where would we be without your love? We'd still be lost in darkness. Where would we be without your cross? You made a way to save us. Oh, your love, oh, your love. our hope, our everlasting hope. You are the hope eternal. You are the light of this world. Jesus, our rescuer. We live our lives to thank you. How could we not adore you? Oh, Jesus, our rescuer. Jesus, our rescuer. Where would we be without your love? We'd still be lost in darkness. Where would we be without your cross? You made a way to save us. Oh, your love, oh, your love. We're safe in the arms of your Lifting a song of highest praise and breathing out your anthem. Oh, your love, oh, your love. We're singing, oh, your love, oh, your love. Oh, we couldn't escape the sin and the shame that kept us bound. We couldn't break through, we couldn't reach you. So you reached down, oh, we couldn't escape the sin and the shame that kept us bound. We couldn't break through, we couldn't reach you. So you reached down. Oh, where would we be without your love? We'd still be lost in darkness. Where would we be without your cross? You made a way to save us. Oh, your love, oh, your love. Now we're safe in the arms of your embrace, breathing in your freedom, lifting a song of highest praise, breathing out your anthem. Oh, your love, oh, your love. Oh, your love, oh, your love. Amen. Amen. We praise the Father for his great love, for his great power. He is the only king, the one who reigns forever in truth, in justice, in might, in mercy. So let's praise him together. Our God. God and firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground. The nations fall. Kingdoms once strong, now shaken. We trust forever in your name. The name of Jesus. We trust. Jesus, you are the only. 
are victorious, the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Amen. Unmatched wisdom. Unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. We bring our expectations, our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. Let's lift up a shout. We lift our banner. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. For may to and you reign. Your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. From may to and you reign. Your kingdom has no end. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. Forevermore, you are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. Amen. Amen. We praise you, King Jesus. Lord God, you are the only King forever. Jesus Christ, you are the Son of the living God. You are the living Son of the living God. We bless your name. Thank you for drawing us together today. We are your people, and we are ready to hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. We're so glad that you're here, church. Would you turn and greet one another now in the Lord?
All right, you can go ahead and be making your way back to your seats. If you have a child that needs to go to children's church, they are dismissed at this time. They can go right there to the back doors and be dismissed at this time. All right, well, hey, good morning. We are glad that you are here this morning at Waterloo Road Baptist Church. If this is your first or second or third time, you're a guest with us this morning, we just want to say welcome. We are glad that you are here, and uh, we hope that you have felt welcome this morning. One way that you can help us out as a church is our leadership to be able to connect with you is there is a guest card in the pew in front of you. If you could take that guest card and fill it out, there will be an offering plate passed towards the end of the service today, and you can just put that guest card there in that that offering plate. That just gives us an opportunity to be able to give information to you about our church, answer any questions that you may have about our church. And so please take time to do that this morning. Uh, before Pastor Griff comes up and shares the word with us, I'm going to have uh, one of our uh, people that works in our youth area come up and share with you for a moment and then uh, pray for us as uh, Pastor Griff comes up to share the word morning. My name is Dan Dreesen, and, and I do work in the youth department. Um, Steve called me this week and said, hey, can you give an idea of why you love this church, why this is your church? And I'll tell you, uh, we've been here since 2011. Uh, I'm sorry, 2007, 11 years. Um, you know, and a lot has changed in our life in that 11-year period of time when we got, when we came here. Our youngest was two years old, and our oldest was seven, and you know, so our, our daughter went all the way through the youth group and is now uh, off, off doing her thing, and we've got two more boys that are in the youth group. When she came up into the youth, I felt a calling that, we needed, that I needed to do more, and so I became a, a youth teacher. Um, and as a youth teacher, you find out really cool stuff about yourself. Like just this morning, I'm teaching 10th, and 11, 10th 11th, 12th grade boys, and I found out that I'm a billion years old. I didn't know that. I, I did not know that, but they told me this morning that I'm a billion years old. So if you ever want to work with the youth and feel really good about yourself, come on down. It's great. Um, we love this church. We, this church has ministered to us in times of trial, has, has taken care of my family. Uh, uh, we, we love the, the programs. All, you know, from, from, uh, Emily does a fantastic job with, with the elementary kids all the way up through the youth. Uh, we, we love this church because of what it's done for our children. We love the church because of how it's ministered to us personally. And so if you're a member here, we, we love it. And if you're not a member here, we would say this is a great place to be. Let's pray now. Father God, Lord, we, uh, we pray right now as Griff comes to, to speak your word. Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to what you would have to say. And Father, that we would not hear Griff, but hear you through him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dan. We appreciate the Dreesons very much. And Dan, I don't consider you that old, buddy. Okay. I, uh, I mean, you're pretty young in my books, okay? Because so, I'm the billion-year-old guy, right? But if you want to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 15 today, Luke chapter 15, I hope you are enjoying your Labor Day weekend. We end up treating Labor Day as a time to do a lot of labor around our house, so I don't know how we've missed that through the years. I think I'm probably the one that caused that problem years ago, but it continues to be the, continues to be the case. Luke chapter 15 is a great story that Jesus tells. He tells three different stories, uh, and they're parables. Parables are real-life stories that could have happened, uh, but Jesus is using them to make a spiritual, a, a spiritual example as you're turning to that, you will see in your worship guide today that we have a very special event for this fall called the Revive Conference. It's coming up in just a few weeks. I ask you to be praying for Joe Ligon. He's pastor of First Baptist Church, Marlowe. Can't wait for Joe to be here and for you to be a part of that Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, and Tuesday nights. On the backside, you'll see our, our students are having a very special from college and preteen, all of our youth. Uh, having a special preteen college youth event that night, very evangelistic event, praying for 200 students to be here that night just to hear the gospel. So join us in prayer, and we're excited, uh, we're excited about that. Let's pray, and we'll get going in this message today. God, I thank you that you are the great, good, holy, wonderful God, 
and you are forever. God, you don't change. You're the same yesterday and today and forever. Lord, I know right here in this sanctuary today, there are people who are really struggling. There's been family deaths or friends' deaths as it happened this week, and they're struggling, God. Encourage them. Give them all they need. God, others in this uh, building have experienced great victory through friends being married or, or, or really good things happening or being able to see family or new special things happen, and we give you the praise for that. But God, we most of all thank you that you are the same forever and that you love us. You've provided your son Jesus for us. And Jesus, I thank you that you are everything to us. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except, except through you. God, so I pray in this message as, as, Dan, as Dan prayed, God, I, I don't want to impress. I don't want to try to impress. God, I want to share your spirit. Share what you want me to share. And I pray this, Jesus, in your wonderful name. Amen. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus is talking to some Pharisees and scribes who would describe themselves as religious leaders, experts in the law. And they did know a lot of the law. Most, if not all of them, though, were lost men, were lost people. They didn't know Christ Jesus. They, they hadn't understood. They were hanging on the on the law and the religion and not the relationship with Christ Jesus. Most, uh, we're excited to say that we believe some came to know Christ. They had been complaining about what was going on all the way back to Luke chapter 5. You remember that story where, where Matthew threw a great feast and he invited the tax collectors into the into the house, and in Luke chapter 5, uh, uh, they're, they're complaining that this guy even hangs around tax collectors, the lowest of, uh, of the, the Jewish community. Nobody would hang around them. They worked for the Roman government, and, and they were thieves. And, and Matthew threw a great banquet to tell his story of faith. He wanted his friends, his, his workers, his, his buddies to find out about Jesus. And these religious leaders are like, you're hanging around these people. And Jesus says, you remember that in Luke 5? He says, it's not, it's not the healthy who need, who need a doctor, it's the sick. He says to Zacchaeus, I've come to seek and to, and to save the lost. And, and now, ten chapters later, there are still people following around Jesus. There's still people looking to Jesus, still, still people trying to discern what Jesus, who he is and what he's saying and, and what he believes. And in Luke chapter 15, Jesus tells three stories. Now, I want you to know something at least about my family. My oldest is here today, and, and this hasn't happened in quite a few years because we, we don't do this to him anymore. But when he was a young man in junior high or high school... There were times that as parents, we would continually share an emphasis with them. Like, don't forget to clean up your room. And then a little bit later, um, Kurt, how's that room looking? Um, hey, Clay has done a good job cleaning up his room. You understand what I'm saying? Layer upon layer upon layer upon layer can be said as parents. You, you say those things to emphasize to your children that something is really, really important. Well, in Luke chapter 15, you will see that the story is told that Jesus emphasizes not one emphasis to the Pharisees and scribes, not two stories to the Pharisees and scribes, but three stories to the Pharisees and scribes. Three different stories that he's emphasizing the exact same thing over and over and over again. Jesus wants us to hear, and that's what we're about to see. He wants us to understand that he desires that the one, wherever the one is at in this world, that the one comes to know him. That he'll do whatever it takes for the one to be saved. 
He is emphasizing that in heaven, the angels will rejoice and and everyone will rejoice in heaven over a lost one coming to be saved. Now, let me ask you a question. I could tell you a story about what I believe has happened somewhere, and you might say, yeah, preacher, yeah, that, that, could, that could have happened that way. Yeah, it, it might have happened that way. I mean, I've read the book on the Titanic. I've, I've watched the movie on the Titanic. I've had the discussions about the Titanic. I can say, yeah, this is what I think happened, but I wasn't there. But folks, you got to understand this. As we read these parables today, and as Jesus says that this is what is happening in heaven, understand this. This Jesus has been there forever. He has seen it happen firsthand. He knows that the angels are rejoicing. He has seen it. He knows that praise is going to the Father. He has seen it. And today, he is telling the lost people in the New Testament and us what is happening in heaven. And what the passion is of the Father. And he shares it three different times to emphasize to these religious leaders. That's the main emphasis of this parable. Second emphasis of this parable strikes to us. It's a secondary. But we as believers in Christ Jesus, we should be like Christ. Therefore, as we are Christ's followers, we also should have the passion, the desire, the willingness to share the gospel and the willingness for, to celebrate the gospel. Third, that we have to understand it's not the primary reason of this parable, but it's very true, that the gospel itself, the story of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, that the gospel itself seeks out people. That people, when they grab a Gideon Bible in a, in a motel, that the, the gospel is trying to seek that one. When a Bible is handed out on UCO's campus to, to somebody who, who walked by the pond a couple weeks ago, that the gospel itself, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is, is trying to seek that one. That the gospel, the good news of Jesus, is also trying to permeate and reach the one. So let's look to see how valuable we are to Jesus. Chapter 15, verse 1. All the tax collectors and sinners were approaching to listen to him. And the Pharisees and scribes were complaining. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Notice that's in quotations. That's what the Pharisees and scribes were saying. So, so Jesus told them this parable. What man among you who has a hundred sheep and loses one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it? When he has found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders, and coming home, he he calls his friends and neighbors together, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the lost sheep. Look at verse 7. I tell you, in the same way, there'll be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need repentance. Then he tells a second story. Or what woman does have 10 silver coins, and if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the floor, search carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls her women friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the silver coin I lost. I tell you, in the same way, there's joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. So twice he tells us what is going on in heaven. And in verse 7, he tells you in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 righteous people who don't need repentance. In verse 10, he says, I tell you in the same way there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. But there wasn't joy in the religious leaders. Chapter 1, I mean, verse 1 of chapter 15 says that the Pharisees and scribes were complaining. They were complaining that Jesus would hang around these people, these sinners, these chief of sinners. Their comment was, he welcomes sinners and he eats with sinners. And, And you know what, folks? They're exactly right. 
in New Testament days, it was, a, it was an act of, of acceptance, a, an act of love if you would eat with somebody else, if you would, if you would show them that you, you cared for them, that you valued them. That's true today. Our, our ladies are doing Bible study on Wednesday night on the, the act of hospitality, the grace of hospitality, and, and the importance of hospitality, and what a great study that is. Young people, you would answer this this way. In the lunchroom, right? It's an act of grace if you sit by somebody who, who's sitting all alone. It's an act of acceptance if you'll go to that new student. It's an act of acceptance if you'll minister to that new person. It's an act of acceptance if you go to that person that maybe has been mocked or ridiculed. Jesus did an act of acceptance by going to them and inviting them, welcoming them. That's what Jesus did to us. Remember, there's no one righteous. No, not one. There's not one of us good enough, not, not one of us that deserves us, There's not one of us that has a Christian heritage that will get us into heaven. We all are equal at the feet of Jesus. But these men complained. I have in my notes here, complain versus compassion. Verse 2 says, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Verse 3 says, so Jesus told them this parable. What man among you who has a hundred sheep and loses one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the open field and go after the lost one until, until he finds it? Those men were complaining, but Jesus is sharing the, the story of compassion of compassion, that he is willing to, to leave the 99 healthy sheep and he is willing to go. He is willing to chase the, the, the sheep. He's willing to search out the sheep. I love what it says. He goes after the lost one. It's not that he sits here and says, yeah, there, there's one gone. Uh, I need my assistant to go after the lost one. Or... I need somebody else, or I need to write a report about the lost one. You see that strong emphasis? He goes after the lost one. Intentional, he gets up, he leaves the 99, and he goes after the lost one until he finds it. He goes after the lost one until the lost one is found. Remember, this story is how Jesus treats lost ones. That's what he's trying to say. Jesus is saying that he seeks, he craves, he has compassion, he chases until he finds the lost one. After he finds the lost one, verse 5 says, when he has found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder. One of the great pictures is a picture of Jesus as a good, as a good shepherd with a lamb stretched around his, his neck. And we think, what a beautiful picture. And it is a beautiful picture. But that's what Jesus does. He keeps seeking and he, he looks to and he grabs the lost one. He chases it down. He, he goes to the lost one. And he places the, the sheep around his neck. But you know, something that's not as sweet about a shepherd is... Sometimes shepherds will have to break the leg of one of the sheep to keep them from wandering off again. He, he doesn't desire to harm that sheep, but for its betterment, for its not to be destroyed forever, not to be eaten up by the wolves, he has to break the leg. And many times a shepherd would break that leg to, to, bring, the, to bring the sheep back. And so our Jesus shows compassion and he chases the lost one. And at times he cripples the lost one. Because being chased and found is more important than being crippled. Now, when I say the word crippled, I, I, I'm not necessarily talking about somebody breaking their leg or... or having a, a, a struggle throughout their life. But I am talking about that Jesus will allow us to be put in situations where we realize, 
I need to be found. I'm crippled in sin. I'm crippled in debt. I'm crippled in, in, in my relationships. I'm crippled in my marriage. I'm, I'm crippled in my, my education. I'm, I'm crippled in my, my decisions I've made. And we're allowed to become crippled. And Jesus chases us and he finds us. Because he knows what is best for us. Oh, the men were complaining about Jesus, but Jesus had compassion, and he chased, and he called, and he crippled. And then the Bible says, when he found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder. And coming home, he calls his friends and neighbors together, saying to them, I don't think he said it to them. Hey, hey, rejoice. Rejoice. Hey, I I, I found that lost sheep. That's not the emphasis. He rejoices with them. Celebrate with me. I found the lost sheep. That was his calling. That was his passion. That was his job. That's what he he was, was meant to do. And our Jesus has that kind of compassion, that kind of calling on the one sheep. That's Jesus toward us. We're Christians. We're Christ-like. Who's that one sheep that you just can't get over? We have teachers and principals in that sheep in this school, in this church. Who's that, who's that one sheep that you just can't get over? We have business professionals in this church. Who's that one sheep that you work with? We have friends and co-workers at school and at work. Who's that, who's that one sheep? Realize this. Jesus is seeking them and craving them, and he is going after that one lost sheep. And once they're found, there is celebration. There's celebration about what fellow neighbors and friends, but there's also celebration in in heaven. I tell you, in the same way, there'll be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need repentance. Now, let me just be flat level honest. I cannot comprehend what celebration is like in heaven. I can't. There are times in our worship service, and Ron does such a great job, and our, 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 our band and our, our fellow musicians do such a, such a great work. And there are times that you know, wow, that as we're singing, we could just worship forever. We could just continue on. You would even rather do that than me preach sometimes. I have a hard time believing that, okay? But I understand those times. I, I have those times, too. They're They're awesome. But let me just make sure you understand. We're not close to what that's going to be like in heaven. We're at the feet of Jesus. We're celebrating. We're praising. And, but Jesus says, not once, not twice, but three times. In the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over the one. There will be more celebrating over the one. There will be more worship over the one. So, Steve, as you were were incredibly tired on the Saturday after Falls Creek this this year and the Sunday and the Monday and Tuesday, you started breathing again a little bit, right? We we understand that. As as that happens, to realize that that week of camp, that in heaven there was celebration over those students who came to know Christ like we've never seen before. We can't even comprehend that. We get a glimpse of that. You who went out on mission trips this summer and you saw people saved and, and those come to know Christ Jesus and your hard work and your, your faithfulness and, and you celebrated, it was nothing than compared to what was in heaven. This summer, as we, we've seen students saved at Vacation Bible School and others who made decisions with the gospel after that and families who've made decisions with the gospel and the baptisms. And we do a great job celebrating, celebrating that. But that's nothing compared to the celebration that goes on to heaven. What does that say when we, we bring it to the bullseye? It's that's the biggest thing 
that our Father, we celebrate Him and we celebrate what He did. And they're celebrating that there's one more. There's just one more. <laughs> there's one more. Some complained, but Jesus had companion, compassion and He chased and He called. And at times He cripples, but He celebrates. That's what Christ does for us. That's how much He, he cares for us. And then there's a parable of the lost coin and what woman has 10 silver coins if she loses one coin does not light a lamp sweep the house and search carefully till she finds it basically that would be one day of living each drachma would be one day of living an average person could live on a on a drachma in in, in Israel so this lady basically had had 2 weeks worth of income she she had 10 10 coins in all likelihood, they were tied in, in their hair for safety. And one of, them, one of them, they would picture, would have fallen off. And what woman who has ten silver coin, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? What woman who lost one day's worth of living out of the ten that she had, one drachma she lost, wouldn't sweep the dirty floor, wouldn't be diligent, wouldn't be determined, and wouldn't be devoted until she found that lost coin. We get that, don't we? We understand what it's like to lose something and to, and to celebrate it. But understand her passion here. She loses one coin. She sweeps the house. She searches carefully. In other words, she's determined. She's devoted. She's willing to get dirty. She's willing to do the hard work. She's determined. I'm going to find it. Jesus is telling the story about the Father's love for the one. And he is saying that our Father is willing to get down on that dirty floor. He's willing to be diligent and determined and, and devoted. He's not willing to give up. He's going to continue to seek and to search until that one is found. Friends, I hope that makes you incredibly thankful for the salvation that you have. I hope it makes you realize the enormity of God's love for us and the enormity of our love and privilege of helping others who are lost to be found. Verse 9 goes on to say, When she finds it, she calls her women, friends, and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the silver coin I lost. Once again, I don't think she was uh, quietly saying that. She called them together. She said, I found it. It's here. Rejoice with me. So Thursday, we... Um, I helped my in-laws purchase a, a car. I've never helped them purchase a car before, but they needed some help, and I was willing to do that. So I found a car. I went and bought the car. I showed the car to them. They really liked the car, which was one of my more nerve-wracking things I've done in my life. You know, Never bought a car for my in-laws before. If you buy it for me, it's no big deal. You know, It's my car, but buy it for my in-laws, it kind of got me a little, little tense, you know. But they liked it. They appreciated it. But I said, hey, there's a couple things still wrong with it. One, one, the light is on the dashboard, won't go off, and I don't want to send this, send it up with you, with you on there. And then there's one more thing that I need to take care of before I get it to you. So, hey, do you mind if I just keep it another week? They had to come down to sell their car and various things. They said, no, that's fine. So they took Sherry's car home to Ponca City, and I kept their car. I was just going to knock those things out. It only had one key. Uh, I wanted to get another key made for them. And so the next morning, Sherry 
doesn't have her car, so she takes my car. So, so I'm leaving at 7, 10 Friday morning to go play the greatest sport ever made, pickleball, you know, as I, I was going to, as I was going to go play. And, and I play in a league on Friday mornings, and in this league, if I don't show up, it's not good if you don't show up, but if you don't show up, the other people can't play either. You know, Carrie, you'd understand that. So if you don't show up for volleyball, other people can't play. So, so I couldn't find the key. I found my other keys, couldn't find that key. So I looked in my bedroom, no. I looked at the kitchen table, no. Went back out to the car, probably left it in the car, no. Looked in my bag, no. Looked in my bedroom, looked in the car, looked in my bag there. I went to my office, no. What did I do next? I called my wife, obviously. Hey, Sherry, where'd you hide the key at? It's not funny, okay? Griff, I didn't take the key. I know. Any thoughts? No, I don't know. Okay, uh, 728, and I got to be by Cowboy Hall of Fame in 28 minutes, or I'm gonna miss it. So I call a church member up, and I said, "Hey, buddy, what are you doing?" Well, I'm walking out the door to uh, my office. Uh, why? He's about a mile from my house. Um, you wouldn't want to take me downtown, would you? Yeah, I don't have anything going. So my new hero took me downtown and and uh, played pickleball. Got through. He came back and picked me up either. I owe him, you're right, I owe him a lot, of, a lot of friendship and a lot of appreciation. We went and ate lunch together. Sherry calls me, found the key. No, she gets home before I do. She searches two hours for the key. Uh, she couldn't find the key. I call her, you find the key. No, I haven't found the key yet. Very nice, very patient, very loving, but very, I, need, I want to find this key. Okay, so I get back home, walk in, feeling like you could imagine I was feeling. And... Um, also, I said, oh, we ate at Inner Urban Thursday night with Sherry's folks. I'd left with a drink. I left with a drink. I had a cup of ice water. So I went out and looked in our recycled trash can. I found the Inner Urban cup in there. I thought, hmm. I had my set of keys, but I had their set of keys, not attached to my set of keys. And... I start moving the trash from one recycle bin to the other to the other trash can. Worked on that for about two minutes. And then the shout came out of my voice, glory be to God. It wasn't a ritual thing. It was celebrating. There was shouting around the Henderson household. There was pointing by the wife to the husband to don't do that again. There was celebration. There was victory. It was great. My key was in the trash can. I got a good reason. I had my keys. I had cup and the other key. I just let everything go out of that hand into the trash can. Stupid, ignorant, I agree. I wish the Lord wouldn't have gave me this example to tell as I'm ending up this story because it did take a half day of, of worry but I am thankful that I can grab with you today the rejoicing that occurs when you lose something practical. Please hear this. There's nothing compared to rejoicing with Jesus and the Father celebrating over a lost one coming to know Him. The eternity of never being separated and always being with the Father is what Jesus is conveying. The people were criticizing him, but Jesus was compassionate and devoted and delighted and he delivered good news. Not only that, he was the deliverer. Not only that, he was, he was Christ, the Son of the living God. Not only that, he desires to save you today. And if you're here today, you're the one lost one. You're, you're the one. We have 300 people in this sanctuary right now. You're the three. You're the one in 99. You're the one. You say, you know what? I know I'm lost. I know I am. And the Father's been searching for me for a long time. I know He's been right there calling me, and I've seen it. Now I see it again. I've never made Christ my Lord and Savior. He's reaching out for you, and He wants to carry you. He wants to celebrate with you. That's how much God loves you. Why don't you receive Christ today? The Bible says in, in, in this parable, it says it's like that the 99 people who don't need repentance. There's celebration over a sinner who repents. How are you saved? You repent. 
you honestly tell Christ Jesus, I am a sinner and I cannot stop sinning and I want to turn away from my sin and I want to turn to you. I'm sorry that I sin. You repent of trying to save yourself. You'll never be good enough. Never be close to being good enough. I'm not, you're not, we're not, no one is. Quit trying to save yourself. Repent of that. Jesus, I'm not good enough. But you came to me and you chased me. And that's why Christ went to the cross and he died on the cross. And he was buried and he rose again on the cross. And that's why I need you. I need you. Repent of your sins and repent of trying to save yourself. And repent of not trusting Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's a big deal. But yes, Lord, I, I receive your gift of salvation. I receive it. Yes, Lord, I can't save myself. Yes, Lord, here, here's my life. Here's my life. I accept salvation. You're my king. I can almost hear heaven right now. As the one who says yes to Jesus is saved. Would you pray with me? A lot of ways this message could be shared today, but the main priority is how much Jesus seeks you. How much Jesus wants you to come to Him. How much He continues to crave you. And do you need that Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior? Christian, are you praying for your lost friends right now? Hey, maybe you're here today and you've been that religious person all your life. You grew up in church and you know it all and you're like the Pharisee of Sadducee. You know, you got it figured out. Has there been a time that you have given your life to Jesus? You've confessed your sins. You've made him your king and Lord. He continues to seek you. He continues to crave after you. Christian, may the Spirit speak to you about how you live your life because of this and how you love people because of this and how you share the gospel because of this and how you crave the one because of this. May we give thanks how the gospel continues to speak and it's living and active, and it continues to talk to us. But in a moment, we're going to stand and, and sing for a few moments a couple songs of celebration. And Hey, if you just gave your life to Jesus, the Bible says there's celebration in heaven. Don't let us miss out on that. Grab a friend, grab your spouse, grab a, a neighbor or a family member and say, hey, would you come with me? I, I just made Jesus my King and Lord. Or, or I need some, to ask some more questions. Remember, it says the 99 are, are, are safe. It's the one. And so perhaps this message, this whole message was for you today. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be here. Maybe you didn't know you were going to be here. But God knew. That's how much He's seeking you. Come and share that with me. Come and share that with other ministers. Maybe you know God's called you to take that next step, Christian. Joining our church or coming as baptism or, or taking that next step of obedience. Maybe God calls you to come to these steps and pray or to give up something so you can be more about seeking and saving the lost. As we sing, would you focus on that Jesus sought you out? He went where you were at. He chased you as the one. And he 
celebrated your salvation. <laughs> That's how much the Father loves us. You stand your feet. Let me pray. Don't wait. Don't miss this opportunity. God, I thank you that you love us so much that you seek and save us and you chase us. You have compassion on us. You keep looking for us. You keep being where we are at. God, I thank you for my friends who came to know you. I thank you for my friends who understand your great love. Bless this time together, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You do what Christ has called you right now. Don't wait a second longer. Come as we sing. A refuge for the poor. A shelter from the storm. This is our God. He will wipe away your tears and return your wasted years. This is our God, so call upon His name. He is mighty to save, He is our God. A father to the orphan, a healer to
we've looked for, we've waited for, and longed for. God, our Father, has given us his word now. And as we read from the book of James, the Lord tells us these words. Don't be deceived, my dearly loved brothers. Every generous act and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. With him there is no variation or shadow cast by turning. By, by his, his own, own choice, choice he, he gave, gave us a new birth by, by the message of truth, truth so, so that, that we, we would be the first fruits of his, his creatures. creatures. My dearly loved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for man's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and evil excess, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save you. But, but be doers of the word, word and, and not hearers only, deceiving, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer. He is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror, for he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it, and is not forget a forgetful hearer, but one who does good works, this person will be blessed in what he does. If anyone thinks he is religious without controlling his tongue, then his religion is useless and he deceives himself. Pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his word, and we bless him. How marvelous I stand in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and I wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean so we sing how marvelous how
Amen. Amen. Church, I'm about to break one of my own rules. I know we are not here, this, these worship leaders that you see before you are not here for our own glory. But we're here as a representation and as an, as an extension of the church at large, of the body of Christ. But I just have to say welcome to our newest band member, to Caden Smith. And there is a Bible verse that says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in all sorts of good things. And Caden does that really well. So, buddy, we're glad to have you. And we praise the Lord for you as well as for the rest of our band. Appreciate you guys. Amen. Thanks for indulging me there. Church, it's amazing who the Lord brings to us. He makes us brothers and sisters in Christ, and he brings us here together so that we can celebrate him and we can love each other. So bless the Lord for all that. Ushers, would you please come forward? Let's get ready to take our offering this morning um, to give a portion of God's blessings back to him, acknowledging that it's all his to begin with. And then Martin, would you please pray for, pray for us, brother? Thank you. Dear Lord, thank you for the privilege of being able to gather together and celebrate the wonderful things that you've done for us. How marvelous, how wonderful, Lord, that you gave your precious blood on Calvary for us. We thank you with all of our heart. Lord, we thank you with our giving today, and we pray that the gifts will be blessed to further your kingdom and your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, a couple of quick announcements before we uh, head out the door as before Pastor Griff comes to share some decisions. Uh, first off, uh, it is Labor Day weekend, and we hope and pray that you have a, uh, a great day uh, tomorrow, and so hopefully get some rest or have some fun or whatever that may be. But just so you know and you're aware, our offices will be closed tomorrow. Uh, we do have a GMA lunch this Tuesday. And as uh, Pastor Griff mentioned, we do have this Revive Conference coming up at the end of this month, September 23rd through the 25th. Uh, that will kick off Sunday morning uh, during both our two, uh, two services, our 815 and 1045 service, and then we will have a service uh, worship time that night at 5.30, and then Monday and Tuesday evening at 6.45. On that Monday and Tuesday night, there is a meal right before at 5.45, and so we hope that you will join us for that. Uh, you should have gotten a card that looks like this in your bulletin this morning. Please take that. There's more of those in the info, info center as you walk out, um, and there's also some back there. If you could take some of these cards, hand them out to your friends, coworkers, neighbors, uh, who, family, whoever that may be, and, and get them here for that. That's going to be a great time, uh, just as, as Joe Liggins, who is our speaker, and also we have a student night that Wednesday night, and uh, both of those speakers are going to be just sharing the, the, the gospel in, in a plain way to understand, and so we're praying for God to do some incredible things uh, during during that week, those few days. Um, also, I'll just point your attention to that we um, have our pictorial directory that is coming up next month, and so just go ahead and kind of mark that on your calendars and uh, get signed up to get your picture taken it on that. Pastor Chris is going to come and share a decision with us. Hey, one more quick thing. Next Sunday, we have our connecting time together, and we will be, uh, for you who are potential members, or you want to know more about the church, or you who have joined our church, uh, two ways to join our church. One is some kind of public declaration. Others uh, be a part of a two-part connecting class. We do that during Sunday school, and then a lunch after afterwards that uh, we finish up the connecting um, class with that so it meets right in here at 9 30 let us know this week if you can come maybe you just want to find out more about the church i promise you we're not gonna uh, stand over you and say join our church okay we just want to give you everything you have because we know god has a great church for you uh, we hope it's ours but if it's not ours we want you to, we want you to know where god wants you to so please let us know i want to introduce you to the thompson family this is jeremy and lacy and their oldest son noah and they also have a son named Pierce. They've been visiting our church for four or five months. And uh, another great young couple that God has led to us. They all three know Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And all three have followed him in baptism. And they're joining our church this morning from a sister church. Would you celebrate with them and with us today? Okay. God bless you. Okay. So good to have you. Okay. Good to have you. One of my favorite Bible verses is Genesis 8.1 when it says, But God remembered Noah. 
And uh, that's, I'll always remember Noah's name. I can't forget it. But great, great verse. No matter what we go through in life, God remembers us. He's for us. Hey, let's have a word of prayer. We'll be at the various doors to assist you afterwards. Let us know how we, how we can and come by and shake their hands afterwards. Terry Watson, pray for us as we close this morning. Yeah.